welcome everybody to our second COVID uh, home exercise program. Today's program is based mainly on balance and mindfulness. And of course, it's all structured around Tai Chi. Sorry about the mask, it's sliding. Tai Chi is pretty much a balance movement. It's a balance exercise where you need to be focused the whole time on where you place your feet and where are your arms relative to the rest of your body. So I'm going to get started because there's a lot for me to say and I'll be talking over the top of us exercising. So I want to introduce um, myself, my name's Jane Simons and Jean-Louis was here before with the first lot of COVID and Jean-Louis' background is ballet and he believes that Tai Chi and ballet are pretty interconnected in all of their disciplines. So let's just begin and this is just a basic introduction and there's lots of refinements that will happen further along the track. So we're going to do two steps, one to the left, one to the right. So let's start. I'm going to load my weight onto my right leg, step out to the left, bring your arms up and down. So all that's happening here is that I'm raising my arms and I'm bringing them down. If you notice, it is pretty much a rocking backwards and forwards movement. So the front leg's working, the back leg's working, I'm aware of my feet and I'm aware of my loading through the forefoot, through the heel. And as you see, my hands do not go higher. I'll show you an example. My hands are not here. My hands are lower than my shoulders and down. Uh, so a lot of people think that it's such a very simple movement, it can't be very hard. The smaller the movement, the harder it is. The more defined, the more accurate it is. Now I'm going to turn to the right. So I step in and then I take my right leg and I step to the right, up and down. As you roll your arms forwards, and down. So what's happening with John and we and myself, we're working with the whole of our body, the back muscles, tummy muscles, the shoulder blades, the legs, you can see the front leg bends, the back leg bends. And you're slowly just shifting your body weight forwards and backwards. We're going to turn now, we finish the movement, step in and turn, and we do the next one where we bring your arms up and you open. Rock back and open and close. So now the next thing with this exercise is to keep your hands within your peripheral vision. So what I mean by that is that my hands can't go more than that, my arms can't go more than that. So I'm gonna stop here and do the wrong thing. And a lot of people think, oh, this looks too easy. I'm going to do a really exaggerated movement because it's obviously the bigger the better. That's completely wrong. The smaller the better. So let's do it again. Bring your arms up and open. Coordinate the arms with the legs. Feel your tummy. Feel your back. Your core muscles are controlling. All the time, those core muscles are holding together the limbs, the arms and the legs. And also just pay, pay another moment of attention. We're not standing upright and doing this and it's all leaning forward. So that rocking forwards and backwards, all of that's relevant. We're going to do the other side. Step in and turn and bring those arms up and open. And you can feel your back. I can feel my back muscles. I feel my tummy muscles. I feel my legs. My hands are really soft. Your hands are virtually doing nothing. As Jean-Louis would know as a ballet dancer, I know my mask. I'm just going to 
get rid of the mask. Sorry, everybody. It's driving me crazy. There we go. We don't change that. Okay, and down we go. All right, let's turn, step. Now this one's called painting a rainbow, arms forwards. You drop your hand down to the side and you bring one hand up, you rock back onto the back leg. So my body weight shifts from the back to the front and I'm coordinating the movement of my arms. So painting a rainbow, it's if you had a paintbrush in your hand, pass the paintbrush to the left hand, draw the rainbow. Paint the rainbow in front of your vision and down, not high up above your head where you can't see it. Okay, so let's now bring those arms down and step in. Now you see when I step in, I'm very careful to step in. I'm not going to do any sort of movement that is jerky or out of control. So we drop down and up. And so when I come down to this side, you can turn your head to the opened up side. So as I have my arm going down to the right, when my hand comes down to the left, turn your head, look to that left arm. And so this is all the work that is occurring whilst you're doing Tai Chi. There is so much to think about. And that's why it's called moving meditation. So we're gonna finish, bring your arms down, step in, and we're going to step out again and separate the clouds. Open up and sink back. So keep those arms within your peripheral vision. Nothing big. The smaller the movement, the better. So this brings me on to people who've got sore shoulders or sore knees. If you can't do the full movement, do an, do an adapted version. So let's step in and let's go to the other side. So now I'm gonna make it tiny. I'm assuming I've got sore shoulders. So Jean-Louis can do whatever he wants. I'm just going to make it a tiny movement. For those of you who've got sore shoulders, sore elbows, you can even make it smaller if you like. And you'll notice that the smaller, you, the, smaller the movement, the harder it is. Okay, so we can step in again. And we're going to step out. And this just brings me to these I'll just pause a moment, these green uh, squares on the floor. When we step out, we step in a slightly open position because that gives you that wider base. So if you have a little marker on the floor so that you know to bring your leg forwards and open it up a bit. So the next one, I call this swimming because it's the easiest way to remember. Keep your one hand in front as if you were swimming. Turn, take a big breath and push forwards and as the left hand comes forwards the right hand goes back and you get a beautiful torsion twisting spiral force around the waist so as you push and pull and push and pull coordinating the movement of your head your arms your leg in front is taking the load. Now the back leg is taking the load. So I'm sharing weight bearing. So let's finish this side, bring your arms down and step in and turn out, up. And you're going to keep the front hand in front as if you were swimming. Turn and pull, feel the spiral force around the waist. So one of the key factors of Tai Chi is to use your core, your pelvis is your strongest driving force. And you might have noticed that my pelvis is turning in the direction of my hands all the time. So you are grounded by your feet, controlled by the, pe <coughs> the pelvis, and expressed in the hand. So we'll finish with that one. Bring your arms down. You can step in and bring your arm out. 
This one is called rowing the boat. I'm holding onto those oars, pull down, lift up, rock forwards, rock backwards. So when you get into the rhythm of it all, it's a very soothing, rocking, meditative movement. And because it's slow, it's hard. So the slower you go, the harder you are working. Step in, step out. You can see my hands kept moving and down. And when I'm back here, my tummy comes in. And now my back comes in. My tummy muscles work when I rock back. My back muscles work when I go forwards. So we can deconstruct all of these movements to analyze which muscles, but all of the body. Step in, holding the ball. Hold a ball, little ball in your hand, and you're going to bounce it down. And you lift that ball up, and you bounce it down. So I'm concentrating on my right hand as it goes up and down. Now my left hand is looking for balance. So wherever that left hand wants to go, find your point of balance, find it. There's no perfect spot, everybody's different. And that's how you balance. You are conscious of what do I have to do with my body to keep my center of gravity under control. We'll do one last one and we'll turn. And now keep your hands moving, turn to the other side and rock back and turn, lift that ball up and bounce it down and lift that ball up, turning your hand down, turning your hand up. Okay, now from this position we're going to do cloud hair, um, gazing at the moon. So bring both hands together, sweep down, bend your knees up, Frame the moon up in the sky. I can see the moon and my hands have gone around the moon. Bring your arms down, bend those knees. Frame the moon on this side. Bend those knees. Keep your body weight forwards through the forefoot. So when you're doing this, you feel your loading through the front of your foot. And you are balanced because I'm thinking, where is my weight? It's through the whole foot. It's through the front of the foot. Now I'm going to just switch and go the other way. So now I'm going to gaze at the moon on the right side. So I turn and bring those arms down. You can see how my pelvis turns with the movement. So if you don't turn your pelvis with the movement, you're not actually giving your movement its best option. Okay, so now we're going to stop here and we're going to push palms. Stretch that hand forwards and pull back. Now if I pause here for a moment, my fingers are directly in front of me, lift your, your wrist and then I just simply turn the pelvis and I pull back. Rock forwards, turn the pelvis and pull back. So I'm feeling my way through. So you might actually do this and say, oh, I don't feel very stable. So move yourself, find your balance. Okay, we do the other side and step. So, so many people say, oh, I've lost my balance. Well, yes, you've lost it because you're not thinking about it. The only way to find your balance is to use your cognitive input. Think about it, feel it, experiment with movement, deconstruct. What is it that I do to be balanced? Okay, now I'm going to just keep my hands very still, turn, and I'm going to do cloud hands now. This is a perfect example of how when you turn the pelvis 
the top elbows on top. I'm not moving my arms at all. My pelvis carries my rib cage. My legs are working. My thighs are carrying the pelvis. And I turn. So this is a really strong movement for the legs. So I'm gonna keep turning to go all the way, swivel your feet, and let's do cloud hands on the other side. And my shoulders don't move. My pelvis carries me. My pelvis does the turning and turning. And then you're going to open up your hands, swivel your feet, swivel your feet, and we're going to scoop down and up. Now this exercise, if I was 12 years old, I'd be able to go all the way to the ground. I can't do that, so I go to wherever I can. So the idea is that you're leaning into a stream, scoop the water out of the stream, splash it over your face, face bend, scoop it up, and we're going to turn to the other side, bend the front knee, scoop the water out of the stream and open up. And bend the front knee, scoop and open up. And bend the front knee, scoop and open up. So we're going to turn again this one is hands crossing over the top of the wave. So you bring your hands down to your pelvis, push over the top, forwards and backwards. So all the time you're doing these movements, you are, you're breathing freely. So you breathe as you go forwards and pull back. So you can see I'm going from one heel to the other. Now I'm going to bring my hands in, turn my feet, do the other side, over the top of the wave, and pull back, and push over, and pull back. So you can see the work that's going on in the legs Okay, bring your hands down, turn, and we're going to be a big bird which opens up its wings. Take a step, close, open. So when you close those wings and open, you can still see your arms in your peripheral vision. So don't think a big movement is better. The smaller, the better. Well, the more control. So I'm going to keep my arms open, swivel my feet, turn to the right, take a step, close, and open, and close. So you can see I'm rocking forwards and backwards, the back leg, I'm coming up onto the toes of the back leg. Okay, now I'm going to turn again, swivel the feet. Now this one, is a punching movement. So make a fist. As you can have your hands into your hip, turn the pelvis and punch, and then pull back. So if you were in a boxing ring, you would lean and push, and then you might retract back. So this is a total spiral of the core muscles, the total spiral of your waist, your tummy, as I push forwards and I pull back. Okay, I'm gonna to swap to the other side and turn, so punch forwards and pull back and punch forwards and pull back. So I've got a lot of work going on in the torso. Okay, so let's bring hands down by your side, turn to the left, and bring your arms up and down, sinking down. So all the way up, reaching up, 
Try to keep those shoulders down. So when I lift my arms, my shoulders stay down. So if you lift your shoulders, you don't get a really good movement of the shoulder joint. Keep your shoulders down when you open close. Swivel your feet, take a step. Keep those shoulders down, leaning forwards. Everything's on a diagonal. So that's what you want to feel. Okay. All right, now we turn to the left. Now you always start a movement in the opposite direction. So I'm going to take a small step, then I bring my hands down and my fingers trail. And then when I come around this way, my fingers go up. So this is a beautiful wrist movement. So fingers trail, pelvis turns, fingers up, bending at the hip. Feel your feet, correct your balance, steady yourself. Your feet are your first point of call when it comes to balance. If you're not thinking in your feet, now we're going to go the other way. So I'm going to take a small step and turn and do the circles in the other direction. So fingers down and fingers up. So as you do fingers down and fingers up, the wrist is beautifully engaged. Okay. Now the last one is a balancing on one leg. Now I'm going to show you Ideally, this is what we do. We stand on one leg. Okay. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, I can't do that. So don't. Just do this. Keep your toe on the ground. You don't have to lift the leg up. You can keep that toe on the ground. So I'm still standing on one leg. I've got most of the balance in, in place but my toe is close to the ground. So John louis probably doing a good job behind me there. And you can up and up. So you'll get into the zone, but the idea is to recognize, what do I do when I stand on one leg? How do I do it? So I'm gonna keep my feet moving, and then I'm going to go to the other side, and so if you can do one or two, one of them's better than the other, doesn't matter. Practice is everything. So Gary Player was, I think he's a South African golfer. He said, the more I practice, the luckier I got in winning tournaments. And Jean-Louis has told me that repeat, 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 don't stop repeating, okay. All right, now we face the front and we draw up energy and we press it into the body. So it's a scooping up energy from the earth and you're literally thinking into the ground and drawing that energy into your body. So all of this thinking really is you thinking into your body and being aware of how you move. Okay, so we're going to finish. Bring your arms out in front. Step in and bring your arms down. Now that one is called Shobasho or Shobashi as some people like to call it. All of these moves are online. You just Google Tai Chi for beginners or Shobashi for beginners. There is unlimited Tai Chi online for you to practice on your own. And this particular set of 18 moves, if you do it uh, repeatedly, you do three or four repetitions each side, you end up doing maybe 50, 60 moves. And it's quite exhausting. And for those of you who are keen on statistics, Michael Mosley made the claim that Tai Chi and Zumba dancing have a very similar effect on blood vessels and um, heart rate, heart well-being. So, you know, we don't need evidence to know that Tai Chi works because it is a mindfulness. And again, mindfulness, people hate the word mindfulness. But you can't do Tai Chi without thinking. 
Now, I have led the movements, but when you get good at Tai Chi, you are remembering the choreography. So you need to know, okay, I'm doing this now, and now the next move is over here, and then the next move, and then so much of Tai Chi is about spiraling, moving, and as you move, you know, you're doing, whatever moves you're doing, you are concentrating on your balance, you're concentrating on the next move, and the preparation for the next move. So if you can train mindfulness during Tai Chi, you'll become more mindful when you walk, when you use your body, and that's really what this is all about. So thank you everybody, and uh, thank you Jean-Louis, thank you for being a beautiful demonstrator. <laughs> And good luck. And we do Tai Chi here at Walpa. If anybody wants to join a group, you just have to call up. So thank you.